Hi guys, this is Kushal from Aisar Bhopal and in this video I am going to talk about an application of genetic algorithms to solve this problem called 0-1 knapsack problem. It's a very very important problem in the, in the theory of optimization and has many many applications. So today we will see how we can solve this problem algorithmically by using this concept of genetic algorithms. So I have explained genetic algorithms in another video, uh, the link of which is available in the description box below. I suggest you first watch that video before uh, uh, coming to this one. So now let's, uh, uh, you know, assume that you have watched that video and get into what is this knapsack problem and how we can solve it using genetic algorithms. So knapsack problem is a very, very simple problem. Uh, you know, suppose you have gone to a supermarket to buy some stuff for your home. Here we have taken the example of fruits. So let's say you know there are many different varieties of fruits available. Each of them has a certain weight and each of them has a certain value. So here value does not mean its value in monetary terms but how much uh, you know importance that particular item holds for you. So for example here banana has a value of 63 and orange has a value of 43. So that means that this banana is more important for you than orange for whatever reason. Maybe you prefer a banana or maybe you know because of certain you know, dietary restrictions uh, you prefer a banana over an orange or there could be several other reasons. So now the idea is that each item has a certain weight and each item has a certain value. Now the restriction is that because you have a single carry bag which can hold only a certain amount of weight. So you want to choose uh, which items to buy so that you can maximize the total value which means you can maximize the total importance that all these items together have for you while making sure that the total weight is less than some threshold which is denoted by WL over here. Uh, so the reason is that if your total weight exceeds WL then your bag will not be able to carry all these fruits and it will tear away and you want to maximize value because you want to carry back home stuff that is you know maximally important for you so here we are not uh, considering the cost so if you want to consider the consider the cost that just becomes one more layer of complication but that can also be done using genetic algorithms so now this problem has uh, you know many many applications uh, but one simple application that all of us know is even in the case of cracking exams. Uh, you know, see there are some students who are, uh, you know, very sincere and they, you know, study everything that is there in the syllabus. But that is not true for most of the students for various reasons. Uh, you know, so what, uh, you know, most students usually do, which, you know, I also did during my student days, is that, you know, you want to choose which subjects to study so that you can study, uh, finish the portion in a certain amount of time, which is your weight over here. At the same time, trying to maximize the value, which means maximizing the amount of marks that we may get in the exam. So let's say certain topics in a particular subject are more likely to come in the exam as questions. So we tend to spend more time on them. So, you know, all of us have been, you know, unconsciously or unknowingly been actually solving this knapsack problem while appearing for our exams. So now let's see how a genetic algorithm can solve this problem and uh, but before that let's see why do we actually need a genetic algorithm. Why can't we do it in a conventional brute force manner. So now the problem is that if you solve this problem by a brute force manner you have 2 power n number of possibilities to evaluate. Because you, let's say if you have n number of items, you have an apple, a banana, an orange, grapes, and you have uh, several such items, the total of which is n. And let's say you are allowed to choose only one unit of each item. So you cannot take two apples, you cannot take three oranges or, you know, five, uh, you know, bananas, but you can take only one of them. So this is also a restriction we have imposed for the sake of simplicity. It is always possible to introduce more layers of complication and then solve it using genetic algorithm. But in this particular video, we are going to only going to consider the, the simple formulation where you are allowed to take each item only once. So now if you are allowed to take each item once and if there are n number of items, 
the total number of possibilities is 2 power n and if you wanted to solve it using a brute force method then you will have to go through each of these 2n possibilities calculate the weight of all of them calculate the total value of all of them and then choose the ones which satisfy this threshold of weight which means whose total weight is less than wl and then among them which is the one which has the maximum value now in principle this can be done however this takes a long long time because it is a non polynomial problem you know 2 power n is not a polynomial in n rather it's an exponential in n and such class of problems are denoted by this uh, uh, you know abbreviation called np which are considered to be very hard problems in computer science and currently there is no known algorithm which can solve this problem in polynomial time however genetic algorithms provide an approximation in a uh, polynomial time uh, you know it cannot genetic algorithms do not provide an exact answer rather they provide an approximation which is quite close to the right answer most of the times so let's see how a genetic algorithm would solve this problem so as we have seen in the previous uh, video on genetic algorithms the first step in this process is to choose the initial population of genomes so in the case of the knapsack problem uh, the initial population is chosen again as a set of binary strings so each binary string has n digits in it so each item or each digit in this binary string has a value of 0 and 1 and it denotes whether the particular item is selected or not so for example in the first binary string we have 0 0 1 1 in the beginning so that means the first digit is 0 which means apple is not selected second digit is 0 which means banana is not selected third digit is 1 which means orange is selected and the fourth digit is again 1 which means grapes are selected then in the second sequence we have 1010 0, 0 initially which means apple is selected banana is not selected then orange is selected and then grapes are not selected similarly you can have many other such possibilities so these number of strings is not 2 power n rather it's a much smaller uh, number what number to actually choose for your algorithm that you can decide depending on your computational resources and many other factors so now once we have uh, you know uh, generated this initial population randomly then we can calculate the value of each of these bit string by using this simple formula so your vj so j represents the jth string or the jth genome in this case so we don't have a real DNA sequence but because it is inspired by genetic algorithm so we can use the word genome to represent each of these binary strings. So Vj which means the value of the jth string is equal to summation over i from 1 to n of xi into vi. So vi is the value of each of these items and xi is just 0 or 1. So if that element or if that item is selected then xi is 1 if that item is not selected then xi is 0 so using this simple formula we can compute our vj for the jth string similarly we can compute the total weight of the of each string by using a similar formula so wj for which means the weight of the jth string will be equal to summation uh, from i equal to 1 to n xi times wi so here we have small w for the weight of each item and, and capital W for the weight of each string. Similarly, we have a v, small v for the value of each item and capital V for the value of each string. So each string essentially represents a particular choice of items from amongst the n available items. So now that we have chosen the initial population of our uh, you know, genomes, uh, the next step is to decide whether these uh, genomes or whether this population satisfies our termination condition or not. So here again there can be many ways of defining your termination condition but here in this one particular way of defining it is that 
we say that we have reached our uh, requirement if the fitness value reaches a steady state which means let's say in the previous uh, 10 generations or previous 10 iterations if the total fitness value of all the genomes in my collection does not change much or if let's say there is a change of less than 2% or 5% in my entire population then I say that I have reached steady state and so I will terminate my code. If that condition has not been reached which means I am still under the process of evolution then I need to go to the next step which is my selection. So how do I do selection as we described in the previous video that selection is essentially done using a probabilistic approach. So we need to calculate the fitness for each of these genomes or binary strings and genomes with a higher fitness need to have a higher probability of being selected. So one simple way of defining fitness would be that we say that the fitness of the jth string which is fj is simply equal to value of the jth string which is capital VJ and the objective is to maximize the value so we could simply equate FJ to VJ. However, this would not work for us because we also have a constraint which means the weight of the given string which is WJ must be less than the threshold WL. So now if you have a string which has a very high value but if it has a very high weight then again it is not acceptable because the weight has to be below the certain limit. So we need to have a slightly modified definition for the fitness. So we say that the fitness fj is equal to vj if wj is less than wl which means we are satisfying our weight condition. However, if my wj is greater than equal to wl then I take vj and I subtract the excess weight which means higher the weight of my uh, genome above and beyond the, the, the weight limit the lesser my fitness is going to be. So I take Vj which is the fitness of that particular genome and I subtract this quantity alpha times W minus WL and usually we take alpha greater than 1. So you can take alpha equal to 2, alpha equal to 3 and then you can uh, vary these parameters and see how it changes the result of your algorithm. So now these fitness values are certain uh, you know real numbers or they could be integers depending on you know how you define the value for each item and now in order to choose our uh, genomes for the next uh, you know batch for the next generation we need to have a, a probability value associated with each genome. So that we can simply do by normalizing our fitness values. So we take our pj equal to fj divided by summation over all of these fjs. So this will be a normalized uh, uh, you know fitness values and the sum of all these pjs would be equal to 1. So here uh, one thing that we need to make sure is that our fj should not become negative. So as you see you know when omega when wj is greater than or equal to wl our fitness value is vj minus alpha times w minus wl. So there is a possibility of this quantity becoming negative. So if it becomes negative then you just reset this fj to 0. So don't allow anything to become negative just if anything tries to go negative just uh, make it 0. So this is how we define our fitness values and using that we calculate our normalized fitness and then we have a probability pj. So what you do is that in let's say one particular generation you have a certain number of genomes each of those genomes has a normalized fitness value associated with it. Now you generate a random number and if that random number is less than the value of pj then you select that particular genome in the next iteration. So you do that uh, for every single genome from one to whatever number of genomes you have then again you come back to the first genome and repeat this process till you have selected the required number of genomes in the next generation. So one feature of genetic algorithms is that the number of genomes in each generation should remain the same. So let's say initially if you have 500 genomes 
and you went from the first genome, second genome, third genome and so on up to 500 and let's say uh, you know 56 out of them were selected in the next generation. Then again you need to go to the first genome and carry out this process of selection till you reach the 500 genome and let's say you know uh, 74 more genomes were selected. So 56 plus 74 is the total population that you have in the next generation. Again you need to go back to the first genome of this current generation and repeat this process till you have 500 genomes in the next generation. So 500 is just a particular example. In your particular problem you can choose this number differently depending on various constraints. So now that you have selected your genomes for the next generation, the next step is mutation which is crossover plus point mutation. So let me remind you crossover is just selecting a particular point along your genome, breaking your genomes into two parts and then swapping the first part of each of these genomes. And mutation is simply taking a particular bit or a digit and then flipping it with certain probability. So for crossovers you can use uh, you know various ways so you can take let's say two you can randomly pick two genomes from your total population and with a certain probability you can decide to do crossover or not. So let's say you can say that my crossover probability is let's say 70 percent. So I will pick up two genomes at random and I will pick up uh, or I will generate a random number. If my random number is below 0 0.7 I will do a crossover for these two genomes and the crossover point can also be decided randomly. You can either decide that you will always do crossover from the middle of the genomes or you can also randomly decide where your uh, crossover point should be. So here again please note that when I am talking about generation of random numbers I am referring to generating them in the range 0 to 1 with a uniform probability distribution. So that has to be kept in mind. And this mutation can be done with a probability of 1 by n where n is the total length of my genome. So if my genome has a length of let's say uh, you know uh, 65 then the probability of each bit being flipped is 1 by 65. This is just a suggestion in your actual algorithm you could use some other method also. So now after doing mutation uh, which is crossover plus point mutation you again go to the termination condition and check whether it is satisfied or not. If it is satisfied then you are done you can finish but if it is not then you have to carry out this whole process again and again till you have reached your steady state. So this was a very brief introduction to the application of genetic algorithms to the knapsack problem. I hope you now understand how this works and I strongly suggest that you implement this using python or any other programming language that you are comfortable with. Thank you.